A candidate for Fort Bend County Commissioner in Precinct 3 is exposing the racism and xenophobic messages sent to him. Terrell Patel posted them online. The worst saying, we don't need more sand negroid humans. On per one person said, he's another dirty Pakistani. Charges against the challenger running for Fort Bend County Precinct 3 Commissioner. Yeah, he is accused of creating a fake social media account to post racist comments directed at himself. We have another fake hate crime, this time coming out of Texas, with the Democratic challenger for Precinct 3 Commissioner in Fort Bend County, Texas, claiming to get a bunch of so called hate speech and racist messages on social media platforms but it turned out he was sending them to himself the whole time. His name is Terrell Patel, assuming that I am pronouncing that correctly. And I'm not going to claim to know a lot about this person other than that he did work for the Biden administration, which comes as no surprise. Here he is during an interview playing victim about the fake messages that he was sending to himself. Unfortunately, those circumstances are not so great. That's right, I I'm glad to be here. And look, we are always gonna push back against hate especially in a place like Fort Bend County that is so diverse and has given so many blessings to people from all communities and walks of life. But we have to expose what's happening here. And Isaiah, I'll tell you, since we exposed it, those hateful attacks have only increased in the last 24 hours. So wow. it's whether they like me or not, my goal is to better their lives. But unfortunately, what we hear from a kind of polarized environment is it doesn't matter what my policies are. They're coming after my race, my religion, my nationality, which is American. Uh, but, you know, I've been called Indian, Pakistani, so many different things that are not even accurate. Um, but our goal is to respond back with love and hopefully make it better for next few generations. And for those who are wondering, did you ever have any regrets about running after these attacks? No, no regrets. I will tell you. My goal is to in, to empower and inspire the young people of Fort Bend County. And if we can't take these attacks on head on and focus on the positive results oriented solutions we want to implement, then there's not a good focus or for the future of Fort Bend. Do you think that should be the master plan or something when immigrant families get here? Obviously, they want their children to become a part of the American uh, dream and essentially assimilate may be assimilate may be the wrong word, but keep your head down, work hard and move forward. But should they also know that there is racism and there's hate here and they should arm their children with that instead of saying, just go out in the world and be successful. You're going to run into these roadblocks, even yeah. if people don't say it. You are 100 percent spot on. If we don't address the problems that exist, I'm putting and, you know, data is the key thing to expose this. I've shown the posts, I've shown the images, the emails, the texts we've received with the hatred. So it's a reality. We can choose to bury our heads in the sand and ignore it. But more importantly, if we're talking about these kids having a better chance in a world where this exists, we need to let them know it's there. The backstory of this whole saga is pretty wild. Basically, Patel had been claiming that he was getting all of these racist or hateful messages, which then led to the current commissioner in Precinct 3, Andy Myers, requesting the Fort Bend County District Attorney's Office begin an investigation into it. Then Myers told investigators that he actually recognized one of the accounts, which was the name Antonio Scallywag. And the reason he said he knew was because he claimed that he had been attacked himself by this social media account before. After that, the DA's office issued a subpoena to Facebook and Google, which allowed them to get the information off of the account. And of course, ultimately, that information led straight to Patel. Another breaking update within the last hour about the charges against the challenger running for Fort Bend County Precinct 3 Commissioner. Yeah, he is accused of creating a fake social media account to post racist comments directed at himself. The Fort Bend County District Clerk just made those charging documents for Thurow Patel available to the public. More than 20 pages that we have spent the last hour sifting through and the allegations are alarming. Here is what we know so far. Back in October, the DA's office received a request from Precinct 3 Commissioner Andy Meyer to look into who was behind several social media posts directed at his opponent, which is Patel. This came after Patel sent out a press release with a collage of supposed racist social media posts that he claimed were directed at him. 
Meyer told investigators he recognized one of the accounts behind the comments as Antonio Scallywag. The documents then further detailed how they linked that account back to Patel, including getting a subpoena from Facebook and Google. From there, they were able to obtain account and payment information matching Patel's credit card number, address, phone number, and other personal data. Patel now faces a third degree felony of online impersonation and class A misdemeanor for misrepresentation of identity. The DA's office tells us this is the first time that they've charged someone with that specific election related misdemeanor. I could list off thousands of different examples of these fake hate crimes throughout the years, but I'll save you some time and just give you a couple of examples that are my personal favorites, starting with a hoax at the Air Force Academy, then finishing off with probably what is the most famous example, Jussie Smollett, and this is MAGA country. The last thing I would like to add here is if you would ever like to see how pervasive this problem truly is, there's a website called fakehatecrimes.org that has a database of many other similar stories. A few months back, we ran a clip of a superintendent at the Air Force Academy chastising racist cadets. His speech came after slurs were found on a dorm room message board belonging to black students. If you demean someone in any way, then you need to get out. And if you can't treat someone from another race or a different color skin with dignity and respect, then you need to get out. The power of that diversity comes together and makes us that much more powerful. Hmm. Well, like many in the media, we ran this clip because it provided a power, powerful response to racism that the media demanded after Charlottesville. While the clip ran, I kept shaking my head for I'd seen this story before. The list of hate crime hoaxes is long. Now we must add this one to the tally. According to the Air Force Times, a black cadet admitted to writing the slurs and he's since left the school. So what's the response when we see stories like these exposed as hoaxes? It's never as huge as the initial response was when we assumed that it was real, mm -hmm. which only encourages more hoaxes. Mm -hmm. For the outrage over the crime is the only part the press seems to remember, not its debunking, which encourages the copycats. I'm pissed off. What is it that has you so angry? Is it the, the attackers? It's the is attackers, it but it's also the attacks. It's like, you know, at first it was a thing of like, listen, if I tell the truth, then that's it, because it's the truth. Mm -hmm. Then it became a thing of like, oh, how can you doubt that? Like, how do you, how do you not believe that? It's the truth. And then it became a thing of like, oh, it's not necessarily that you don't believe that this is the truth. You don't even want to see the truth. This is where we waited for Jesse to come before we attacked them. So we got here with 10 minutes to spare and we had to plan our escape route to survey the land. His building is actually right here, right above the stairs that we're going to attack him at. We made sure we got there at 2 a.m. sharp. On the dot. On the dot. So we waited here for about, what, four, four minutes? It was about four minutes, four minutes, but it felt like forever. Because it was cold as balls. So I saw him out the corner of my eye, and I was like, OK, that's him. Let's go. As I was crossing the intersection, I heard Empire. And I don't answer to Empire. <laughs> my name ain't Empire. Uh, and I didn't answer. I kept walking, and then I heard Empire. We gotta go get this Empire. Yeah, that's him. That's him. Is that him? That's that neck. It's that neck. Get that neck. Oh, he's moving fast. Come on, let's get him. Get that neck. Let's get him. As we cross the street, we say hey to get his attention. Hey, neck. Hey. So I turned around and I said, the did you just say to me? I and mean, I see the uh, attacker. Uh, masked. Turned around, looked at us. He said, this MAGA country And that's when we started yelling uh, the famous slurs he wanted us to yell. Hey, aren't you that empire hey, Empire fat It's MAGA country. Punches me right in the face. So I punched his ass back. Yeah. And then he said, what did you say to me? And then that's when I threw the first punch at him. And then um, we started tussling. You know, it was very icy. 
and we ended up tussling by the stairs, uh, fighting, fighting, fighting. I held the blow because I didn't want to hurt him, of course. So I made it look real, but I held it. Then we started tussling, moving, moving around, and then I threw him to the ground. He wanted it to look like he fought back. That was very important for him because he said, hey, don't just beat my ass. Make it look like I'm fighting back and whatnot. So we did that. And then I threw him to the ground. And while after I threw him to the ground, I, he had no bruise. I wanted it to look more real. And there was a second person involved who was kicking me in my back. So then I threw him to the ground. After I threw him to the ground, I used my knuckle and gave him a noogie. So I went like this. Why did I do that? To give him a scar, to give him a mark, to make it look real, like he really did get his ass beat. After I did that, I fake kicked him. And uh, then it just stopped. And they ran off. And I saw where they ran. And the phone was in my pocket, but it had fallen out. And it was sitting there. And my manager was still on the phone. So I picked up the phone and I said, Brandon. And he's like, what's going on? And I said, I was just jumped. And I, then I looked down and I see that there's a rope around my neck, which I hadn't You obviously hadn't noticed that, it before? No, you didn't because see? it was so fast. You know what I'm saying? It was so fast. This is where I came around with the bleach, the infamous bleach in the hot sauce bottle, poured it on his shirt. Then I finally put the rope around his face. I did not put it around his neck. I just placed it on his face. And that's when we took off. Why did you hesitate to want to Call the police. You know, there's a level of pride there. We live in a society where, as a gay man, you are considered somehow to be weak. And I'm not weak. I am not weak. Do you want to take it off or anything? Yeah, I do. I just want to see that. Do you want to see that? 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 It's uh, in his house. Uh, they did filming you. Here being like, audio like, and reading. Like audio that I guess when I, I mean, did they just know uh, when they were walking? Okay, so can we continue? turn it off? Yeah, yeah you're giving us permission to shut it off? I'm going to go.